welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another Q and A. Uh, we decided to get them kind of going on a regular basis because the last one we did, uh, you guys really enjoyed, and I had both Gary and I received such amazing feedback. How long have you been married? We are going to be married nine years on July first, which is also Canada Day. That's good because you know, for me, I don't have to. I only have to give Valeria one gift. Right? Because July 1st and our anniversary is the same day. Huh? Smart, What right? do you mean? What other gift for Canada Day? <laughs> well, in case, <laughs> in case you said to me, where's my Canada Day gift? I could just say, but you got your anniversary gift. Thank God. How long did you date for? We met and then I proposed to you two and a half months later. And then we lived together for a year as an engaged couple. And then we got married. Right. So it was like a trial period to see like how we can... How no, the engagement together. wasn't a trial period. I, it was. You tried got, to lock it in. When I got you that ring, it wasn't the trial period. That was that was it. Gotcha. Okay. You see, we learn something every day. You thought that was a trial period. You thought that I I I proposed to you. I got down on one knee. I gave you a ring, and you thought it was a trial. We're just going to try it out and see how it works before the wedding. Yes. So, at what point did it become real to you? Is it, is, the it, wedding is it already real? Like, is it real now? Yeah, yeah, it's real. Is it getting serious now between us? Yeah, for sure. So for it's, sure, it's for the sure. three kids. We should, maybe we need one more kid so you think it's serious. No, it's okay. When I proposed to you, you thought that was a trial period? At that point in time, you didn't think that we're, this is it? This is my partner for life? You no, this is my partner for life. But when you meet someone and you get engaged within two months... I was sure, but I also knew that we have this window of making sure that we are compatible because we haven't dated for long enough. So hold on a second. So at what point did you decide, okay, yeah, 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 it's okay, like, he can stay? I knew that we are compatible. For me, that year was just a great time to kind of fast forward our relationship and to really make sure that we're compatible because we live together. I I came back from New York. We weren't traveling. Like, we were together I all have the a time. Feeling, I have a feeling this was like your mother came up with this. After I proposed to you, your mother said, listen, plan the wedding. Everything's fine. If it doesn't work out in the next year, you can always back out. Did your mother say that to you? Absolutely not. All right. Okay, let's continue. I'm a little upset, but whatever. How are you sure your partner was the one? I'm still angry at the first question, <laughs> so I have I need a little time to figure out uh, now what I'm gonna say. Uh, well, whatever I did, and I just thought I'd like try it out and just get you a ring. And worst comes to worst, I would just lose the ring, and it wouldn't be a big deal. I didn't really know. I'm still I'm still figuring out if you're. The it's one. not about the ring. I'm it's still about figuring it out. when you saw me and when you when you started to pursue me. I understand. Yeah. When I figure it out, I'll let you know. Okay, so I knew that Gary was the one um, is because I, I feel like I've never felt that, I guess, sense of partnership, a sense of dedication and devotion before. I think that, you know, in my previous relationships, it just always felt like it was very fleeting. If like shit hit the fan, that person is just going to be out. And I think that... Again, me, based on the experience that I've witnessed throughout my childhood, I really wanted to make sure that, and I knew that I want a partner that is there and that is dedicated and is going to do the work that is required for us to just to be a solid, you know, partners. And I think that that's something that I truly felt with Gary. The way he loves me is very important and made me feel supported and made me I guess also have a better understanding of my full potential. So I think these are all things that I've realized very early on into our relationship. And that's why I said yes after two months. In terms of how I knew that you were the one, you didn't play games. You didn't try to make yourself less available to me uh, in order for me to, to value you more because I already showed you that you're highly valued. So you didn't, you didn't do any of that game playing or any of that posturing to try to I guess secure me or lock me in mm -hmm. so th that was that was a big that was a big thing and you also made me feel very secure you know every time your phone rang and in my mind just due to my previous experience I thought okay it's a guy I have to start feeling weird and like who's this guy every time your phone rang it was like either a girlfriend or your mom that's it and I always paid attention to it. And every time your phone rang, and also every time you got a text message, 
anything like that, you never hid your phone. You never hid your phone. You, you never had, you made me feel like I was the most important thing in your life. So that had a lot to do with it. And the other reason is because you're obviously, you, like, you're just a very kind human being. You always cared about making other people comfortable. You had an amazing relationship with your mother and, and your brothers. And that just, it, 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 it was very important to me. And listen, I mean, yeah, it certainly helps that you're drop dead gorgeous, right? Like, yeah, of course, but understand that appearance and aesthetic, yes, it's, it's important. Men do like beautiful women. It's not a secret, and I'm, not gonna, I'm certainly not going to deny it. But if the other part, if the human being part isn't there, I just want to say there's a lot of pretty girls out there. A lot. A lot. So if you don't have that, if you're not a good human being, and if you're not polite and kind and nice, if you're not all of those things, but you're really beautiful, it, that wouldn't have been enough for me. So that's how I knew you were the one, because you, you had everything. Did you have any moments of doubt before marrying Gary? Um, I think definitely the age difference was something that went through my mind. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's no secret. We have a pretty solid age difference. We have 18 years between us. So... Uh I'm the older one. Yes, in case you didn't notice. So yeah, I thought about it, but also, you know, still I was 20 years old. I tried to project into the future and to kind of understand what will be the challenges, but it's also when it's your person, it's your person. And at the end of the day, I just knew that we'll figure it out. That's that. But that I would say was the only kind of doubt. I was just concerned about the age difference as well. It yeah. was a concern to me. And I remember when I met your mother for the first time, she asked me, what are your intentions? This was like 10 days after we started dating. And I told her, I said, like, I, I love your daughter and I, my intention is to marry her. My only concern is, is the age difference. And your mother said to me, you, you understand, she's not a regular 20-year-old. And I said, no, I understand, because if she was a regular 20-year-old, then we wouldn't be having this conversation at all. So I understood that you were, you were just different. Now, the other thing is with, you know, with our age difference and with you being only 20, yeah, it was a concern. But I also understood that you had already spent something like, I think five or six years on your own traveling the world, uh, you know, modeling and being self-sufficient. Was it a logical or emotional decision? It's not possible for a decision like this to be purely based on logic. Yeah. Because that's not, that's not love. I mean, that's... I think it starts as an emotional and then you bring some logic into it to make sure that everything kind of makes sense in a way. The things that are important make sense. When I decided that I wanted to marry you, I never looked back. In my mind, I never reconsidered it. I never thought she's not the right one. I never thought making a mistake. It never crossed my mind. What were the conversations you had that helped you commit so soon? I think that for me, it was just the conversation that we have had about us and what we want for ourselves and uh, individually and together as a couple and what we see, you know, is going to happen in the future, how we want the future to look like. I think that those were early on conversations because Gary, I mean, the first week we started dating is like, you're going to be my wife. We openly spoke about those uh, things. I mean, when we got engaged, those things were all on the table, like everything was laid out. There were no awkwardness. There was no like weird suspicion or questions. So I think that that really helped me to commit quickly because I knew we were on the same page and our values and morals were very much aligned. How do you handle conflict so early on in a relationship? I feel like the same way you handle conflict now. I mean, we've talked about conflict resolution before. I think yeah. it's definitely, it's, it's a really important skill, not only for relationships, like romantic relationships and marriage, any but it, just any relationship. Conflict resolution is important when you're talking to your kids, when you're talking to your coworkers, when you're talking to your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Early on in our relationship, I brought it up and I said, all I ask is that we don't raise our voices. When we debate something, when we have an argument, when we disagree about something, we don't raise our voices. And I find that not raising your voice when you're talking to your partner, honestly, like as, as silly as it sounds, I feel that's like 90%. Because when you stay calm, then you, you're talking from a completely different place. And it's much easier to resolve conflict before that escalation. So as soon as you escalate and you start speaking louder and you start getting aggressive, it's very, it snowballs from there. It's just mm -hmm. a catalyst. Mm -hmm. So that's been something from day one. I've, I told Valeria, I want to make sure we never raise our voices. And we actually never do. We stay calm. I can tell when she's mad at me. Um, 
no, but she's, she becomes very serious and very monotone, and she's explaining it to me, but she never raises her voice. So maybe I'm, I don't like it, maybe I'm angry because of what she's saying, but at least I'm, I'm, not, I'm not attacked. And that allows us just to, to just resolve everything quite easily. How do you move past someone's flaws and get to know them as a person so quickly? Flaws? What flaws? Listen, people choose to see like what they want to see, right? Yeah. So if you're in a new relationship, if all you're focusing on is that person's flaws, then I'm, I'm sorry to tell you they're not the problem. You're the problem, right? Amen. Well, no, but it's true, right? It's I true. Agree. So if you focus on the, po it's like anything else in life. If you focus on the positives versus the negatives, you're just going to have a better life. You're going to have a better outcome. You're going to be more productive. Everything's going to happen like in a better way. With Valeria, I was so focused on her positives, I I did not see her negatives. And even now, I'm so focused on her positives that the little kind of bullshit stuff that she does that I like feel is what? negative. Like you're always taking my phone chargers. I'm always, my phone, this phone's about to die. This is my phone, look, it's about to die. Why is it about to die? Why didn't stealing. you charge it before? Because you keep taking, there's no phone chargers. You keep taking my phone chargers. How did you deal with opinions of others saying you were moving too fast or that he was too old for you? I mean, I feel like I was so focused on all the goodness of this relationship and, of this relationship and all that, all the amazing things and the love that I felt that I can't say that I was too hung up on what everyone else was saying. Uh, we were kind of just doing us and uh, just kind of moving along. It was a little bit different for me than for Gary because, again, I think he was in a different stage in his life. He's older. He cares less about what people think. Obviously, when you're 20 years old, what the world thinks is a very big part of your life. But uh, at least it was for me. But um, I have to say, like, once I got my mother's kind of like thumbs up and I knew that she felt comfortable and she felt safe. I, again, I think that I just wasn't focusing on it because I was so focused on enjoying this bond and relationship that we were forming. Have you ever questioned second guess your decision? No. Never, not even for a second. How important is timing when you are meeting slash dating someone? I personally think it's more important where you at. So the timing is not necessarily something that has anything to do with where that person is. It's more about where you are at in your life, right? And I think that it is all about timing because if you are in trouble and if you still don't have an idea of who you are, if you're not going through, you know, not letting yourself go through certain things. So yeah, when you meet that someone, it can be the one, but you're obviously not in a position to recognize that. So I think that timing is important when it comes to where you're at in your life, uh, to be able to recognize the good that's coming into your life. Uh, and then the next question is, how do you open yourself to finding the one? I am a firm, firm believer that you can never look for someone to make you happy. It's a very heavy weight to put on someone. It's also completely just inaccurate. No one can make you happy if you're not making yourself happy first. So I think that it's extremely important to recognize that to when you are looking for a partner, be at a place when you where you are 100% with yourself, you enjoy your own company, you understand yourself, and the other person will just bring more of that rather than try to fill you know the bucket that you couldn't fill yourself so i truly think that being open to finding the one is first getting to a place in your life where you're just like i like i'm happy with me like i'm content i know what's going on here you know i i'm self-aware um, and I think that that's just a magical place to be at. And then when that person comes into your life, um, you just, just take it to a whole other people level. People often make the mistake, people who are still single often make the mistake thinking that when I meet the right person mm -hmm. and when I am dating them or get married, then I'll be happy. It just, it doesn't work that way. Again, you have to work on your own happiness and your own self and improving yourself. How do you know if someone is not the one. Oh, you know. You know. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, I've never been on the fence. Like, people who I dated before you, I knew they were, I, I don't know. But if did I, you ever dated someone where you're just like, it feels like the one, and it's like, but it's not right there. I dated, but you want it to be the one. When, but I was it's younger, not it. when I was younger, I dated someone who I thought maybe there's potential. But looking back at who I was, I wasn't equipped to make that decision because the things that that person did 
in my opinion, it just, it would have ended up in disaster. If I ha had, I have married that person, I wouldn't have, like, it wouldn't have been good because there were certain things that that person did that morally was, in my opinion, not right. But I didn't know at that point, meaning I knew, but I didn't have the, the strength. Hi, Benny. I didn't have the strength to say, you know, to, to understand, not the strength. I just didn't have the knowledge to say no. It, you know, it didn't work out, obviously. Uh, we're literally sitting on um, the third path here to make sure that we have some nice scenery. Uh, thank you so much for joining You're us. You're my nice scenery. You're my nice scenery. What's the one? I, I don't know. I love you. the view. You do? You're my best view. Meh. You're not on TikTok. You don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any other questions, you want us to cover any other topics with Gary, specifically these like relationship uh, Q and A's, we'll be more than happy. So thanks for watching. What are you doing to me, guys? Let's, thanks for watching. We're gonna try to make more of these videos. Um, we're gonna go hang out with our kids now, and it's just a party, it's just a constant party. That's what we do. That's what we do. We party all the time.